Luke, you got co-host, right? Privileges, co-host, so you can share? Okay. Okay, well, continuing the conversation, I'm just so excited, delighted to uh, be able to introduce Luke and his work tonight. And when I say his work, not so much for him to describe it to us, but for him to give us a little experience of it. Um, I think it's just so perfect, you know, right? That uh, we've spent a couple of weeks uh, digging into Tehard, especially um, with Tehard that we, you know, so often read the beautiful quotes and, you know, philosophize and, <clears throat> and then you just go, kind of like with Montessori, well, then what's the practice here? And so uh, Luke, the work that Luke is doing has just been absolutely transformative for me. Um, personally, um, the, the work that we do in community um, is also something that uh, just absolutely impacts your individual practice. So I'm just really excited to give Luke an opportunity to introduce us to that a little bit. And <clears throat> the, the bio that we, we put up, I'm just gonna read it. It's very beautifully put. And I think it, it describes very well what my experience of Luke's work has been. Luke Healy is the co-founder of Integral Christian Network, co-founder with Paul Smith, an endeavor to help further the loving evolution of Christian consciousness and practice. He is passionate about pioneering innovation in forms of spiritual community, in gathering like-minded and like-hearted pilgrims on the spiritual journey, and making mystical experience of God accessible in individual and collective practice. Said so beautifully. And the last thing I'd like to add is that um, Luke did send a longer bio and it's not filled with, oh, he studied here. Oh, he did this and that. No, it's his spiritual journey, <clears throat> which says so much. Those are really one's credentials is one's spiritual journey. So without, without further Adieu, I will say that I met Luke on the Tehard de Chardin page. So once again, Tehard is bringing us all together tonight. And thank you all for coming, joining us. Yeah, thanks, Annie. And yeah, thanks for coming and, you know, choosing this over a presidential debate, right? This is a, <laughs> <laughs> a much better space oh to God. be. <laughs> Maybe you're taping it. It's fine. No, but uh, I don't know who has the mute button, but if I'm going on too long, you can mute me too, right? That, that's how that works, right? So, um, well, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. And um, thanks for that intro, Annie. Uh, yeah, so tonight, um, I do want to get us to experience. I do want to kind of talk about some things. I have some um, slides, not slides, but I have some images that I want to bring forth and kind of a, a presentation to go through. But mostly I want to, you know, it's a a small group of us, I'd love for it to be very conversational. So um, I might try and kind of share the screen and then come back and uh, kind of bounce back and forth because I, I want to engage in some conversation and then also have time for practice. So um, did I remember right? It's about, is it 60 or 90 minutes or it's kind of a little open? You can go to 90 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll try to keep that as a buffer um, <laughs> for sure. But uh, yeah, so what we're going to kind of start with talking about today is uh, we space and whole body mystical awakening, which is kind of our core practice for integral Christian network and what's sort of emerged over these last couple of years in, in terms of spiritual practice and consciousness development. So uh, is anyone familiar with the term we space or the idea or practice? Okay, well, one person. All right. Well, um, that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. We're all familiar with the experience of it in some sense, but the term itself, yeah, might be a little, a little unfamiliar. So um, I am going to, let's see, did I get the right one? Can y'all see that? Okay, I got nodding heads. That's good. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we space, we space is just a term. It's, it means um, it's kind of bringing us into the space among and between us kind of as distinct from the space solely inside or outside of us. 
So notice the kind of relational nature of that term, right? We space is a relational space. It's uh, drawing us into the the shared collective, right? The energy between us. The um, yeah. So that's what we're going to be exploring today. We're going to start with we space and then get get a little more into the uh, the embodied forms of awakening. So. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think is really important when we talk about our spiritual journey or uh, really just, I think, all of life is this kind of shift from I to we. Uh, this is a quote from Albert Einstein that says, a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. The striving to free oneself from this delusion is the one true is issue uh, of is the one issue of true religion. <laughs> so I uh, I really like that quote and and I I wonder how many religions feel that that's the one issue of <laughs> true religion right is that has that been our experience of religion that that's what it's trying to lead us and propel us toward but um, you know that's kind of what I would hope a more evolved form of Christianity or really any kind of religion would do, right? To bring us back into, into, um, into that sort of understanding of our unity. So what if religion was about the transformation of consciousness into greater unity with the divine in all things and all people? Um, that word has become so tainted religion, right? <laughs> Most people like spirituality more than religion or that sort of thing. But really the roots of that word, right, are to rebind or reconnect, right? Or to bring back together that which we think is separate or that which we experience as apart from one another. And the we space is kind of one of the ways that we do that. And, and this is really the kind of religion that we need. Uh, as you know, in our world right now, we are experiencing an unprecedented convergence, an unprecedented coming together uh, in what I think is a crisis of consciousness, right? With globalization, with uh, migration, with the internet, we're being exposed to all sorts of different people and experiences, and it's just this, this convergence, right? And uh, I think it's a crisis of consciousness because if our hearts are not big enough, uh, that's when we crash, right? We don't come together in communion in the true we space, but we we kind of butt heads. We get into that uh, othering, that separation, that um, sort of rejection and denial of we space. So when we have this, um, you know, this coming together, uh, we can sort of get stuck in in tribal consciousness or uh, the ways that we <laughs> uh, regress or come back. So how do we cultivate? more communion? How do we learn <laughs> to come together? How do we learn to discover our underlying unity? How do we learn to perceive with greater love and fuller kinship? And it's kind of those how questions, right? Because we can we can talk about it, we can read about it, kind of like Annie was saying with the, the Tehard quotes, right? That's something that um, we might study about, but we really need to discover the we space, discover it experientially, move into this in form and practice. So this is a way of seeing spiritual practice as a process of collective discovery into greater love and unity. So that's where we space comes in. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about. And I just want to start with kind of a little discussion around, um, you know, spirituality can sometimes be a private thing or something that we don't talk about, but just a, a little discussion around you know, in what ways do you share your spiritual experiences with others? So I'll open the floor for that if anyone wants to, to share anything around that. In what ways do you share your spirit, spiritual experiences with others? So you can just unmute yourself and um, answer as you, as you see fit. Yeah, brother, I would say just in conversation as it feels appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, conversation. Pretty open, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe in calls like this. <laughs> yeah, this is a great example. This is a, a prime example. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I second that. Uh, I was also thinking about uh, us coming together. In this uh, meeting, that's uh, one way, especially during this time of uh, confinement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, connecting and meetings like this is a great, <laughs> a great example of coming together in that way. And yeah. I like to um, bring people together in meditation and uh, we do what a lot of what we call meta work where we, we go on these journeys and create a room and a space in that meta realm to do human uh, potential work, a yeah. lot of work. Definitely, great. We have traveled with groups of people, some on this call, uh, mm -hmm. to spiritual locations and had experiences beyond the physical in those different places, Egypt, Glastonbury, Dominar. Mm. Yeah, pilgrimage, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, the, um, I think the second year of the co-creators convergence that we held at Sunrise Ranch, we had Wendy Foxworth, Reverend Wendy Foxworth mm -hmm. on, and she had a book called The Wee Way. Mm. And um, she had a book and uh, it was, she put us through some exercises and it was all about going, you know, from me to we. And mm. it was really, it was really great. I, I really, so uh, through our annual get together and, and through the groups that we all are associated with and, and linked, networked with, I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. I'm not surprised. I mean, this is called the co-creators convergence. So I, I you know, yeah, you, you're all, you're all there in many ways. So absolutely. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Well, I, I, I just realized that uh, it's been a, a few years now, probably uh, about uh, four or five years that I haven't really been uh, practicing within uh, the context of uh, uh, groups or an organization. I mean, uh, I was for several years uh, part of the uh, secular Franciscan order. So the fraternity would be meeting at least once a month. I've also participated in the Curcio movement. You may know that about that. It's like uh, weekends of uh, you know going in uh, retreats uh, from uh, Thursday night to uh, Sunday. Uh, again, it's a Christian. I mean, it's been mostly uh, Catholic, but uh, especially the Curcio was open to all the. Christian denominations. Mm. So I think in these practices, there were uh, some good experiences of, uh, uh, of oneness, you could say, or, or with space. As mm. you spoke and introduced with space, uh, the word oneness came to mind, you know? Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Tex. Yeah, it's, uh... yeah, yeah, community, com spiritual community can sometimes be be a tricky find or um yeah um but sometimes yeah we go through different different uh seasons in that too so yeah thanks for sharing okay can we see are we back can you see the presentation again okay good all right so we're going to talk a little bit about um growing up the we or or evolving forms of we right evolving forms of ways of being together and um you know, this is kind of trying to move into the we as an experiential understanding of community and functional practice, right? So um, practice and community together. And uh, this is kind of uh, in Christian evolution, but I'm sure it applies to other settings as well and other groups that you've seen. And um, we can see uh, as we go through some ways here that uh, groups have come together in the past and maybe how we see them them evolving. So uh, one way, uh, kind of a, an earlier stage form of, of groups is the warrior, <laughs> the warrior stage where we are kind of defined by what we're against, right? You see this in, in some Christianity that's very, um, it's all about battles and victory and resistance and defeat the enemy, right? And we kind of define ourselves by what we're against. You see this in kind of fundamentalist religion or um, other forms of, of people coming together uh, in that kind of against, right? Uh, in sort of another stage of traditional religion, um, this is kind of your foundational churchgoers, uh, and it's kind of about being together, right? It's instruction, there's a lot of learning, Bible studies, Sunday school, you know, teaching, 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 um, and just kind of uh, maybe some indoctrination with that. <laughs> it's very hierarchical. Uh, it's, and um, 
you know, but it's also really warm and, and caring as long as you're in the in-group, right? There's sort of a, a tribal with that thing as well that's very much about the boundaries, right? And if you're in the in, you're great, we love it, you're, you know, very warm. But as soon as you cross over that boundary, there's there's a shift, right? <laughs> there's there's kind of this, you know, in and out thing there with a lot of kind of traditional forms of, of church or we space or gatherings in, in that spiritual way. Um, then you see some more kind of modern expressions, right? We go from traditional religion to sort of modern religion. And this is what I like to call optimizing religion. <laughs> it's a little more sleek. It's a little more crafted. Uh, it's still educational, right? Maybe we go from Bible studies to book studies. Uh, and it's more entertaining, right? Worship music is more like a concert or... Um, you know, there's, there's uh, a lot kind of, they're, they're telling jokes, they're trying to get you, get everyone engaged like an audience, right? It's a speaker and an audience in that form in a lot of ways. And uh, it's also kind of uh, isolating or lonely, as you see kind of from this center picture here, right? Um, there's not as much community in this space. And uh, notice how everyone kind of sits in rows side by side. And there's, you know, there's the stage, and then there's sort of the audience. And uh, it's a real kind of individualized maybe form of, of uh, spiritual gathering or we space. Uh, when we move kind of to more of a postmodern uh, forms, right, we, we kind of shift into uh, more sensitivity, more inclusivity, um, and I think some more specialization, right? You seem to see people come together around maybe a specific type of practice, whether it's Tai Chi or yoga or um, you know, a little more focus on practicing. You have kind of a return to a circle, right? There's circling practices or um, you still have some conferences in this in this space as well, right? People going to conferences and learning and maybe doing practices more at the conferences as well. And uh, some of the shadow of this is it can be a little more privileged. It can be kind of me focused. Uh, I don't know if you're, you're familiar with kind of the spiritual parody guy, JP Sears. Uh, he makes his long red hair. He makes his funny videos, right? About kind of the the uh, the extremities of or the extremes of kind of postmodern spirituality, sometimes called New Age or things like that, right? In in Christian circles, it's it's kind of more experimental. Uh, it's kind of more emerging, new monastic communities or pub church or things like that, um, and also forms of social media. I didn't I didn't put a picture up of that. Uh, that one picture at the bottom, Soul Cycle, right? It's it's almost like a spiritual community or those forms of kind of uh exercise places crossfit's another example where kind of postmoderns are finding community around something that's kind of spiritual but it's it's body it's you know it's a little more in that realm um yeah but like i said there can still be a good amount of kind of me focused and uh some of those things are hard to access right this this kind of nice spiritual yoga retreat i don't know maybe that maybe that costs a little more than i can afford um <laughs> in that setting right but uh, so then the, the next stage, we might say integral, uh, if you're familiar with integral theory, it's kind of, we're talking about development here, but really this is just kind of a catch all for evolving, right? How are we evolving into new ways of being together, new spaces? Um, I think that that's coming from mystical, it's interbeing, there's coherence, it's co-creative, right? Like you all, the co-creators, there's a movement into a real interdynamic flow between one another and a co-creation um, and we're going to talk more about, about that. Um, this book here, Cohering the Integral We Space, is kind of foundational for the work that we've done. It's, it's gathering essays around different ways that people are, are kind of developing this idea of we space. So that's what we're going to kind of explore a little bit more. Um, I think I'm going to pass over this we's that we participate in in the interest of time and just kind of talk around some of this idea of where are we going? How can we continue to evolve our ways of being together? How can we evolve the we. So I think one of the first parts of that is just recognizing we, right? However we gather in a spiritual setting, it's always important to pay attention to both the exterior form and structure and interior spiritual energetic dynamics of our collective spaces. It can be helpful to ask questions like, why are things set up the way they are? What is the emphasis or focal point? What are the values? What are we trying to do here, right? Uh, think back to some of those examples before, right? Of if there's one person on a stage and everyone's sitting in rows, like, okay, what's the power dynamic there, right? What's the <laughs> what's the structure that we're engaged in, right? If we're in a Zoom call, right? 
uh, what's our what's our setup, right? Oh, there's kind of all the boxes are the same size unless it's different. One box is higher, right? So it's just that kind of awareness of of those those dynamics, those structural um, those structural elements and uh, an energetic feel. So, all right, and just asking the question, right? What do we want this space to be? Uh, you know, I've experienced that from seeing like this time, right? You have you have a rhythm that you've created of you passing on people who are coming in and bringing things, and and you're cultivating a space with a lot of intention, and that's that's really important. I feel like a lot of a lot of religion, a lot of spiritual practice, just kind of uh, is continuing what's always been done, right? <laughs> and uh, we need to invite more of that creative element, right? That more direct intention. I know you've spent a lot of time with Tehard, but I'll offer you a couple of quotes further for uh, that incorporate into this. Uh, Tehard says, we cannot reach our own ultimate without emerging from ourselves by uniting ourselves with others in such a way as to develop through this union an added measure of consciousness. And this was really instrumental for me because I came to a point in my spiritual journey where I realized I couldn't go any further alone. Um, my interior path uh, as it was by myself was at an end. I had to move out and discover the we, and that was really the way um, there needed that that union, that movement into uh, to bring about uh, further consciousness. And Teilhard calls this process decentration. Uh, I'll read the quote first. He says the act, or no, this is mine. Uh, describing it is the act of decentering is a movement specific to the expansion of our hearts and consciousness through the intensification of frequency that happens when we actively and interpersonally engage with others in the experienced reality of our always underlying unity. All right, so like Tex mentioned, the oneness, right? A lot of spiritual practices, that kind of centering, right? We're moving deeper into ourselves. We're discovering our true self. We're moving into that, right? That's centering down, finding ourselves. But the next step is decentering, right? Moving out from the heart into the we space, into the space with others. And that creates, um, that creates an environment that actually enhances our ability to, to evolve and enhances our consciousness. And Teilhard calls that decentration. By their very nature and at every level of complexity, the elements of the world are able to influence and mutually penetrate each other by their within. So as to combine their ra radical, it should be radial energies in bundles, this psychic interpenetrability grows and becomes directly perceptible. It is written all over the social phenomenon and is of course felt by us directly. So what Teilhard is saying here is that uh, we, are interpenetrable, right? We're not the hard boundaries that maybe we think we are. When we move into a space with others, we have this perceptibility, right? We can know, like maybe you've experienced if you walk into a room and you're like, oh, something's off here, right? <laughs> or, oh, this space like has a real piece or, or something to it, right? So um, this perception, right, is all over the social phenomenon. We're maybe not taught to engage with it very actively or directly or consciously, um, but it is something that we can learn more and engage with in our spiritual practice in the we of recognizing that, oh, there is this kind of way that we can move among each other, right? Uh, and that's kind of what Teilhard's pointing to here. Remain true to yourself, but move ever upward toward greater consciousness and greater love. At the summit, you will find yourselves united with all those who from every direction have made the same ascent for everything that rises must converge. So that's the convergence that we're hoping for, right? One that comes from rising consciousness and coming together around um, a greater understanding and knowing of each other. So in this we space practice, we're discovering that there is a rich, vibrant emergence that comes from collective engagement, empowered by deep love, participatory trust, and expectant hope. All right. I've kind of just brought up a lot there. <laughs> so I'm going to pause again and uh, yeah, just kind of open it up for, for questions or, you know, there's a little bit more to dive into here that I have that we can, or we can pause and say, um, you know, maybe return to that question. What, what here resonates? What we's have you experienced that, that kind of speak to some of the things we're naming here or um, yeah, do you find any, anything jumping out at you? Clover, yeah. Brother Luke, I heard you refer. I guess talk to me about what a postmodern is. 
Well, yeah, I, I mean I that's just that term, but I sure, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of just a, a, a one way of of um, naming kind of the development of consciousness, right? Uh, integral integral theory kind of looks at these different stages, and so yeah, postmodern is kind of what comes after modern, and it's kind of uh, you know has different elements to it uh, for sure, but it, it's sort of that. Um, maybe consciousness of the 1960s was sort of when a lot of that postmodern came online and, and has been brought forth. So it's, it's kind of a big umbrella, right? Um, but yeah, I see you nodding. So I think you got me. Yeah, got me there. Uh, this is Noel. And I would just say that, um, you know, a lot of us studied with Barbara Marks Hubbard, who Absolutely. of course, Tehart was uh, one of her mentors, I would say. And, um, you know, I really, um, I think I'm really just proud of how the co-creators convergence conducts itself because we're always, we always say there's no front of the room. We recognize that everybody is, brings a gift and depending, we have a different theme every year. So the different people bring a gift, you know, it's experiential and uh, we create, create quite a, an amazing field together. I mean, there's only like 30 or 40 of us, but uh, it gets uh, um, very, very intense. So I, I think maybe we would fit into the, to the integral. Yeah. Um, yeah. That'd definitely be of, my impression. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I guess that, you know, all would be because of, you know, the influence of, of, of Barbara mm -hmm. and, and Tehard. So yeah. that's. Yeah. It's great to see it. I mean, and, enacted and embodied. I mean, yeah, Barbara very much is that evolutionary thinking. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with her work a little bit and for sure, yeah. It's great to see that enacted, right? And and brought forth in form and in the way that you gather as well, right? Yeah. I see Tex has his hand up. Well, I sense that uh, over the years, uh, there's been uh, much talk about uh, being open to synergy, to synergize. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we start with cooperating, collaborating, and uh, there's been talk also of uh, synergizing. Um, and now there's this talk about oneness of humanity, oneness of humanity, maybe of all the ecosystem. But even within this uh, oneness, uh, which is in a certain way, implying the we that we are all uh, interconnected. Uh, I don't feel that the uh, shift has really been made into the uh, we space. We space, uh, I, I feel, requires a certain uh, awareness, a certain uh, probably awakening, one would say. And uh, now, a group uh, engaging in, in we spacing, uh, okay, uh, we need to be pre presencing, but at the same time, there needs to be this uh, uh, consent of intention. So if we have the consent of intention, and which is, I mean, I'm really thrilled to be, to, to, to have discovered the uh, co-creators convergence uh, through the TI uh, uh, Facebook group because it's years that I've been uh, trying to, <laughs> to find that sort of uh, uh, interaction, uh, intentional interaction for something greater than, than I, you know? Uh, so mm -hmm. I think uh, we are on, on, on the, uh, I say, on the threshold of a shift. Mm, yeah, that's good. Thanks, Tex. And I think, I think one thing as well. I don't, I, I don't know if this is exactly what you're pointing to, but one thing that brought that brought forth in me as well was kind of the. There's a difference between the all and the we, right? We have the I, the we, and the all, and the all of kind of the whole union and everyone, all things together, right? There's there's an experience of that, um, and then the we is the more direct relational interpersonal space right it can be a little more messy uh it can be a little more uh right because we bring ourselves into that so yeah that's good and we're going to be talking uh next a little more about what that practically looks like at least yeah in the way that we do it so, or icn does it luke uh, this is bob um 
and I appreciate what tech, the expression text just gave of consent of intention. I'm just mm -hmm. thinking of some of these spiritual journeys that we've been on, some of these sacred journeys, and um, what what brought about this more we-ness as a result of it. Uh, I can think of the example of um, more than one person has come to the co-creators convergence uh, in-person event in that circle and said, I don't know why I'm here. <clears throat> my, my friend so-and-so told me that I would really appreciate being in this circle. And by the time they leave, they're recognizing they have found for themselves why that is and what about the collective that created the reason why they were there that they didn't know before they got there. Uh, example I give of myself is when we went to Egypt with a group, uh, I really felt like I was just a bag carrier. And it was like I was intrigued and I was um, consenting to the intention of it being a sacred journey, not a tourist group that we were visiting all these sites, traveling with people who are, uh, have years and years of experience in energetic work and world healing and dousing and all kinds of things. And so the word that came to me when you were talking was surrender, is that I realized that in my, that example, I surrendered to the energy of the collective, mm -hmm. of the group that were destined to be on the Nile together. As I've heard others that have come to Co-Creators Convergence, realize that they surrendered into the we-ness, the wholeness of that was the exact number of people and the exact right people that they were supposed to be in company with for three days or five days or whatever. So the, the surrendering to the collective energy to me feels like, for me, a major element of journeying into we. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's a really good naming. I think it that's very true. There has to be um, a trust, right, and an openness to allow that movement, right, out in. I, I have relationships in my life, especially as I, I'm sure we all do, right, where the more I become sensitive to this and to that collective, right, I'll be talking with someone and recognize, oh, this person can't move into the we, you know, it's like everything gets, like, sucked in, you know, um, and you know okay well just let it be right and that's where that's where they are that's that's where it is right but then the more that we start to recognize oh okay there's a field being generated here whether that's two people whether that's a group um and starting to learn those dynamics but yeah that that surrender that trust that movement in is is absolutely crucial from the start yeah it's good i just wanted to say real briefly <clears throat> as you worked through those different stages, if you will, um, I just had to kind of play through how just, we've always been longing for this though. You know, um, we just have been looking for the open door or the invitation or, um, and your first question for some reason evoked um, He's actually the godfather of my youngest daughter and a man that I used to pray with back in the 80s. And, you know, we would hold hands and pray together. And it was just, now that was really beautiful, powerful experience. Um, I don't know how much we weren't really focused on co-creating together. And I think that that's a really important, you know, that, that outward looking um, direction that you, <clears throat> that, that naturally overflows or ought to overflow, but, you know, we just haven't known, like we haven't had a teacher, I'm sorry, you know, in a lot of cases, but I could just, I can just see all through there, you know, wonderful experiences in organized religion and the Catholic church of people that I, I did feel very close to and, warm with and you know there were moments where you kind of had that sense of a we space and yet that's not what was being lifted up right you know so yeah yeah, yeah and that's and that's our you know that's our conveyor belt that's our our way we've had to go through those forms that they work for a while and then we outgrow them or then you know the they're they're sufficient for the time the boat that carries across the river and then we gotta you know get out and, and keep going uh to the next thing right so yeah mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. 
Okay, let's let's keep going. I've got one more section to share with you all, and this is kind of be we'll be getting a little more into, um, yeah, specifically uh, how we engage with our form of we space practice in the integral Christian network. So, um, you know, again, not just to talk about these as nice ideas or, or things in our head, but seek to really craft an environment, a container, a way of practicing together that cultivates this evolution of consciousness, right? And, um, you know, before we do that, we need to have, uh, we talked about surrender, consent, or right, know what we're moving into, right? So people who come into this, they have expectations that, that they don't always know what they're getting into, right? But there are some fundamental shifts that we like to sort of, you know, name and say, okay, well, you know, this might be a little different from how you've experienced it before, but this is kind of what we emphasize in our form of we space. Uh, so one of those primaries is from the mental to the mystical, right? We have to go beyond just our minds, beyond just scientific, scientific materialism or the way that we right, see the world uh, only from our rational cognitive mind. Uh, one of our main influences calls it the imperialism of the mind. <laughs> so we're not throwing out the mind, right? But we're not letting it uh, be sort of the imperialist ruler that, that takes over everything, right? So we're open to the more mystical field. We're open to uh, the invisible, the visionary realm. And, and not only open to it, it's a, a key way that we uh, feel and move into the we space and understand and learn and know. Um, we'll talk more about this in a little bit. Uh, another shift is from shoulder to shoulder to heart to heart, right? So we look before at people sitting in rows and watching something, right? Or even kind of uh, that sense of camaraderie that comes from working together. Uh, not camaraderie, but it's a shift to a communion, right? A real togetherness and interbeing, right? Interbeing is not a side by side affair. And uh, that's a little intimate, right? Intimacy can be scary whenever we encounter it, right? Again, that comes back to consent and surrender and I'm moving a stink bug off of my desk. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's a shift though, right? This takes, the we takes an open heart and it takes, you know, we do our groups and we say, okay, keep your heart open to the group, right? Don't go sit in the corner, don't turn, right? That's a, a way of engaging into the field from our hearts, right? Another shift is from within to among, which we've talked about already, right? We're not just having our own private experiences within ourselves while other people are here around us or with us, right? Um, we're actually moving into that shared reality among us. Um, so sometimes I say we're not being alone with God together. We're being together with God together, right? Um, the stink bug really likes me. It's just coming right up in my, in my grill here. Uh, maybe I'll put it on the floor. <laughs> okay, little friend. Uh, another shift is from conceptual to energetic and embodied. Um, again, this kind of does speak to the mind, but um, this this really uh, is participatory with our whole body. Uh, so our ways of being together are not always verbal. They're not always something that we can bring to our mind, um, but it's dealing with the energetic field, right? Our felt sense of that collective, as we've talked about a little bit, but also our four centers, our four centers of spiritual knowing, which we're going to talk a little bit more later, but you can see those here, right? In our body, it's not just in the mind, but we have these other, other centers as well. Uh, from what we know to what we are about to know, this is the quality of emergence uh, that comes forth that uh, we're not just sort of repeating what the stored ideas or the knowledge that we've accumulated, but there is a rising wisdom coming forth from this collective moment to moment uh, in the in the we. Um, and this is our, our way of spiritual knowing, right? Teilhard again says, we cannot recognize God's hand and voice in the world without a special sensitizing of the eyes and ears and of our soul, grace, that is without a special sort of sense or super sense, right? We have to learn this, we have to develop it. It's something that, um, like Andy said, we are born with a longing, right? But our recognition and manifestation of that coming forth, that uh, evolution in consciousness, yeah, is something that we learn and develop. And the way that we do that is through, at, at ICN, is through uh, these centers of spiritual knowing. Uh, these four centers are based on research from the California Institute of Integral Studies uh, and their graduate program kind of looking at Okay, how do we what what do we see in, in kind of spiritual practice across the world and and different ways that people experience and move into knowing in awakened consciousness 
and kind of bringing those down to the head, the heart, the womb, and the feet. So let's start with the head because it's probably the one we're most familiar with. Uh, but it's not just our, our, our uh, kind of uh, mind, again, not just the head, but it's, it's perceptual. It uh, shifts into a more visionary headspace, right? A knowing, a knowing beyond the way that we normally think, right? Sometimes this comes forth with symbolic imagery or pictures or metaphors that come, um, or maybe that kind of cosmic witness transcendent space that, that we also, a lot of um, meditation practices lead us to uh, in our mind. Uh, in our heart, right? Heart center of spiritual knowing is relational. It's relational, right? This is our space of connection with others. It's the source of love and bliss from within what we call the radiant center, the radiant heart center. This is the space where we relationally connect with one another in the we and also with the living Jesus or spiritual guides or, or spiritual presences that are, that are also uh, with us in the we. This is the communion, right? This is a real space of coming together. We don't have to agree on everything mentally, right? It's not, it's not, uh, that communion togetherness is not confined or defined by our ideas or our mind. Um, so the heart is the real, the real primary move or space into, into the we. Our spiritual womb or gut center, uh, some traditions call this the hara or maybe the lower three chakras you might be familiar with, but um, this, this spiritual womb is, uh, is a really profound and powerful center of knowing uh, from deep within, our deepest identity, our core identity down in our, uh, in our womb space, right? Uh, it's also the source of our intuition and courage and creativity and uh, really our divine identity. Uh, there's so much, so much here in the womb <laughs> I could go into. We just did a whole workshop on, on wombfulness, right? We have heartfulness, mindfulness. This is wombfulness. Um, and it's a way of being and knowing from that deep space. Uh, a lot of feminine energy, a lot of... Um, yeah, a lot of depth there. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, the feet, the feet and the legs is our space, um, is really the connection point, contact point for our body. So it's really that embodied uh, moving into material reality, right? Whether that's grounding to the earth, connecting to that cosmic energy, like roots growing from the bottom of our feet. Uh, we might call it, as Christians might call it the body of Christ, or I like to use the phrase our incarnated entanglement. Uh, into the web of life, our interconnected system, uh, cellular bliss or energy uh, manifestation in, in the cells of our body, our somatic knowing, right? Uh, you see this sometimes with intuitive or intuitive healers, right? They, they know that someone else is sick because they feel it in their body, right? And that's a way of knowing, somatic knowing in the we that we can also kind of cultivate and learn more uh, about not learn more actually practice <laughs> and engage with that's that's one of the things that uh that i do a decent amount so this is kind of the summary we call it integral prayer or awakened knowing right we have these four centers and things that can come forth from each of these centers and um yeah so with that's kind of a real quick brief overview but um yeah that's opened it up for questions there, I, I wanted to leave this on the screen so people could look at it. So maybe we'll we'll leave this up while we uh, move into discussion again, if you find anything kind of arising from all of this or, or specific questions, feel free to jump on in. Well, uh, first I have to say these are the most beautiful slides I have ever seen. Where did you get, did you create all these? Yeah, 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 I did. We, uh, we put a lot of emphasis and, and this is, uh, this comes from Paul, my, the co-founder, Paul Smith. He, his whole, uh, he was a pastor and he really took to heart. I think it's Carl Jung who said, uh, you know, images speak to us on, on a, on a deeper level beyond words that, that convey meaning it, different levels and depths. And so he's, he's always put a lot of emphasis and time into finding these images and, you know, creating pictures, he even create some of them, right? Create pictures that can sort of convey what we're trying to name because language is always insufficient, right? It's always right. metaphor. And form. So we need to take advantage of as many tools as we can, right? <laughs> wow. They're just, um, 
Stunning. I guess it really did talk to me on a deeper level because I'm just about speechless. So um, great, great. I'm glad I'm recording this. Mm -hmm. So um, can look at later. But uh, Andy, go ahead. I'll, I'll I was later. just going to say, you join the network. Um, they they send out a reading each week, a reflection each week, and they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the artwork absolutely rises to what's what's being um, shared there with those reflections um, and beyond. It, yeah. yeah, thank you for expressing that, Noel. It's it's amazing what these guys <laughs> put together visually for us. What, what is the network that you're talking about? In case people do want to get that. Yeah, yeah, the Integral Christian Network is, uh, yeah, what what Paul Smith and I have founded, and it's it's an online community of these we space groups, um, and that's kind of what we do. We gather together in these groups. There are about six to six to nine people or so, and and do this practice. Um, it's what we call whole body mystical awakening, uh, and uh, I'll show you. That was kind of, that's kind of the final slide. The we space and whole body mystical awakening. So. Yeah, we have a mailing list that you can can jump on in and we have uh, writings every week on Saturday. And then, um, yeah, our primary thing, we do these we space groups. We also have kind of a Sunday gathering and some other uh, other means of engagement. But we're, we're creating this community, this this network, right, a living network of of interconnection and um, spiritual evolution for Christianity mm -hmm. and beyond not just Christianity. But. <laughs> wow. Um uh, I don't know. Flo, did you want to ch chime in here? Um, no, no, thank you. I'm having some coughing issues. So. Okay. I saw you haven't muted yourself, so that's why I was... Uh, well, as you were speaking of that, um, I said, you know what? I went and grabbed this. This is Barbara Marks Hubbard. It's a little... You probably can't even read that, but... Um, Mm -hmm. the, evolutionary has, the evolutionary communion mm -hmm. and um, she has a little practice in this it's just a little booklet she has this little practice in there that you do uh, and also an evolutionary chakra meditation but um, it just seems so aligned with what you all are doing mm -hmm. that uh, I was going like gee this is kind of sound a little familiar let me go grab that you know so I just thought I would would share that with you um, the yeah. evolutionary communion, the sacred way of conscious evolution. Mm -hmm. yep, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the stream we're in. We're coming definitely from that, her influence and, and others along with her in that kind of evolutionary spirituality and integral. And yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'll check that out. That sounds Yeah, she would call us the evolutionary pioneers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. what she called us, dear? Pioneering souls. Pioneering souls. Mm. So, um, so how long is your organization? How long have you been gathered and doing this? And yeah, we just started in in January, uh, January 2019. So it's been you know coming up on two years here, but uh, it's really been resonant, especially for Christians who want to find a more evolved or mystical form of, of spirituality. Maybe they've outgrown local communities or just not resonant with, with what's available in the space around them. Right. So we're uh, with, with the internet, we meet on zoom, our groups. And so we're all over the world. We have uh, people from 17 different countries and uh, we have, I think um, 18 we space groups right now. Um, so yeah, it's really kind of people are, or we're finding a resonance, right? A desire for it uh, out there. So. Right, awesome. I will yield the field. And I just have to put a plug in for, for the Sunday morning gathering that they have, um, or that we have. <laughs> there are typically about 25 of us. And, um, you know, it's not as intimate. The We Space group is going to meet a couple of times a month. And so, you know, you're gonna, you know, share about what's going on in your life a little bit um, and all of that. Um, we don't take the time to do that necessarily, although we have come up with a coffee hour <laughs> from time to time, but even then it's not that same kind of intimacy in some sense. Um, but what's beautiful is that you still have, we still have the practice and here are, you know, 25 to 30 people 
to um, engage in this whole body awakening together. And so you're getting out of the just, you know, chatting and sharing, which, you know, has a value, but just intentionally connecting um, in all those ways um, with that visionary mind and, um, you know, heartfelt sense of one another and co-creative womb space. And then the, the grounding with the feet into the planet is just, it just is vibrationally so powerful. Um, so I'm absolutely addicted to the Sunday morning as much as I can get there. So um, I think that's just, but to me, it, it highlights how powerful this is, that it doesn't have to have, you know, that I know a whole lot about your life and all that. Um, but, you know, but we're sharing. I mean, it is a shared co-creative space where we're just sharing about the reflection together and we're sharing um, that uh, intentional connection with one another. Sounds very intriguing. Yeah, Tex. <laughs> uh, well, I'm uh, very grateful to have uh, uh, progressed uh, to the meeting with uh, you, both, both in terms of the uh, co creators group and uh, now uh, this input from Luke. Um, because uh, the challenge, it's uh, not uh, only to be co-creators together. I think the challenge is how do we help, uh, how do we become instruments of transformation in the world? Now, I am involved in certain in initiatives where we, we are advocating that uh, there need to be empowerment of collaborative solidarity. So that sounds very lay and very like uh, mundane. Uh, but at the same time, such initiatives call for a certain sense of mission even to try and, and, uh, and uh, catalyze, if not inspire, but to be present and to be able to maybe hold a space that we may enable a we space even if it's uh, unconsciously, but people with a certain intention of collaborating over, uh, you know, like uh, we're talking about more effective democracy or, or collaborative solidarity for sustainable uh, uh, prosperity for generations to come and all that lot. Now, to be able to bring about that level of, of uh, shift that, uh, that uh, humanity is, uh, Calling us, I think uh, our our mission is 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 laid out for us, and uh, I see interaction uh, in such group as uh, where I come to to replenish myself, to to re revitalize myself, to to uh, inspire me to be able to face the challenges in uh, the regular world when you're trying to to try to work for the greater good, for the common good. So I thank you all. And uh, I'm very grateful that I'm here through, through Teyad. I, 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 I got a copy of Teyad uh, uh, Le Milieu Divin. Uh, I was, uh, what, uh, probably 16, 17 then. And uh, I've never really cracked it from cover to cover because uh, I felt that uh, I, there was a certain uh, essence that I, I, I've been trying to work with all my life in everything I've been doing. But, uh, uh, I mean, anyway, that's what's brought me here and I'm, I'm so grateful and I hope that we, you know, we can encourage as, uh, as I've been encouraged to the TR group to come to, to the co-creators because uh, by, with a name like co-creators, we have to we have to make sure we uh, we harmonize, <laughs> if, uh, we synchronize, and <laughs> we are at the level that level of attunement. Uh, 
thank you very much. Thank you, Lok. Mm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thanks, Tex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, I know, thank you, Tex, so much, because you just spoke to what has really been on my heart since I um, really like since Bob Noel told me about the conversation and I started to hop on some of their calls and and there's so much, it's 24 seven. So I kind of focused on Friday, Food Friday and just feeding the world. And, and so I guess I'll start a little backwards with what I've been feeling a lot since then, since these Thursday calls, really when, um, you know, Annie shared about Tehard, just that, okay, here we are. Yeah, like, what's my piece? How do I change this? How do we transform the world? How do we make this happen? And yes, I mean, these gatherings are, the people are here, the, the people on the conversation, this could be the exact same conversation, just different details around what topic. And so I'm so grateful for that and co-creators convergence, because that's, it's the same idea, you know, restructuring so that we are coming together in circle. And what I, tonight, Luke, since you've been speaking, the thing I valued the most is, um, and I can just feel it in my body, you know, wanting to cry, the resonance, the coherent field of the heart. And, and while that is often an intention with religious gatherings or spiritual teachers or spiritual groups, sometimes that ego just takes over and, and something gets lost there. And then there isn't that safety and, and people are no longer really truly coming from their heart. Something else is colliding with that. And we're seeing that right in so much of our world. So it feels so good to hear you, to feel the vibration of not just the people that are on this call tonight, but whom each person here tonight represents. So now I've, I've heard Annie speak a couple of times and I have this sense of um, not this group, but now I know this group too, Annie. Um, what she represents, you know, from Tehard and Montessori. And, and so now I feel connected to that whole realm from this coherence, harmonious way that you're speaking. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very, I have this thing, <laughs> could be called judgment, that will come up in me sometimes because of growing up in Catholic school and trying to speak my truth and getting shut down and being told to be quiet, all those old stories so sometimes when it's that Christian friend that's really coming in strong and wanting to convert me to what they're teaching, I notice myself back way up or I put a tiny bit of a wall up. So I had to work on that a lot. And I will also say, given the amount of people I work with, I've taught in a Christian school all my life, there are many Christians that I'm dear friends with that do have these strict boundaries or rules, whatever they are, that do not feel open hearted. And so, so there, so there's, that's what's, you know, swirling through me. And, and again, that's why I think I love, I'm the resonance in my body right now with what you've been sharing is so delighted mm. my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. And thanks for naming that. I mean, that's such a, something we see in our network so much is like, we're kind of uh, like post-Christian Christian. Christian. <laughs> like we have so many people who are like, they, yeah, they've been wounded by the church or they have triggers, they have these allergies, these struggles, right? And and that's that's part of it, you know? And a lot of people have to leave that and set, set it aside and go somewhere else. And that's great, you know? That's totally, totally fine. Like, it, again, it's not that tribal deal, but uh, some people find uh, a coming home like to that, the heart of Christianity, right? What it, what it's supposed to be, what 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 Jesus was bringing forth in kind of that, that call to love and compassion and, and um, kind of that second person devotional um, love the world, you know? So, so that's really what we're trying to bring forth as a reclaiming and a, and a reoffering to people that, that hopefully we can find healing and restoration from the damage that's come not only to ourselves, but to the world as well. Right. <laughs> you know, we put Christian in our name very intentionally and, and that was a hard choice, you know, honestly, cause it's, it, it, that's a word that carries a lot. Right. Um, but there's also a lot of power in that, that, that the best parts of that tradition, right. And, and the coming home and, and returning to, to the core of it. So, yeah. Tex, did you want to share something? Yeah. Well, Mentioned the, uh, the uh, question in the name, uh, uh, my 
think uh, uh, it brings to how can I say it resonates with me uh, here in uh, Quebec. Uh, uh, we're in the throes of uh, uh, laicity, yeah? like uh, that the, uh, all public services should be non-denominational, non that there should be no, no ostentatious signs of uh, religion or even uh, politics by, uh, by public servants who are in authority and things like that. So there's a lot of debate going on. Uh, I'm supposed to be attending uh, a new meeting as from uh, next month, uh, once a month, with regards to restorative justice. And uh, now the message I got yesterday was that bringing up, uh, highlighting that the, the organization is, uh, is uh, pro laicity. So anyway. Now, I, I felt that the person knowing me and my uh, secular Franciscan background was just, <laughs> well, my just, but, but it's very much in the air. It's very much the whole society. So I think uh, there is a certain challenge now, and which brings me to Barbara Mark Sabert, which I have to acknowledge also, because over the, the, the recent years, maybe 10 years that I've gotten to know her, She's been an inspiration for what the future can be. And she was known as a futurist. And uh, she was the nearer to, uh, I mean, a living person to what I had read from Teyad, you know. And, and I've been uh, uh, hoping and I've been trying to reach that sort of level of supra human uh, connection, which has brought me to. Uh, uh, try to develop a certain awareness to soul awakening. Now, with in French, uh, soul is âme, and then we, we say amitié for friend, ami, and we say amour for love. And I've been uh, pushing over the maybe last uh, four years to write amour because there's, a, there's an accent, uh, uh, like a hat on the A for âme, for soul. So I write the amitié uh, with the accent to try and, 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 and sensitize people to the need of connecting at a soul level to, to try and, because we've been involved, I was involved and still am in a project for a peace center or eventually a love center. But all these words uh, uh, has, brings this very, uh, uh, you can say, uh, regular connotations, you know. So I've been trying to, to to break some barriers, but at the same time it creates barriers because then you say, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, when people are talking about heart awakening, now I'm talking about soul awakening. So that <laughs> poses another, another another challenge. But in soul awakening, I think it's a, it's it's the need to just be to be present. That's where presence comes in. So anyway, thank you. And if you can uh, uh, maybe look, uh, if you touch a bit about soul awakening, I mean, you mentioned about the heart, you know, but uh, what's your take on that? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I love that. It, the, the phrase that some people have used in our, our we space groups is soul intimacy. Uh, then that communion space in the we space, there's a real soul intimacy. And I think soul awakening in that sense of like, soul um being connected i like the the french there the the root words the etymology of the heart and um you know it's it's uh yeah i mean the four centers is is how we do that and so i mean i know we talked about that if we want to i i, I would love to lead us in like a little meditation um in kind of moving into that those four centers in uh what we call moving from entry state to awakened state uh consciousness so does that do we have time for that do everyone want to do that we want to do that yeah we have time for that we have a few announcements at the end and yeah okay yeah sure so um yeah i'll i'll uh and this is what we do at our, we we use a lot of guided guided meditations and that's that's something i do a lot in our our community so um yeah so we'll do that probably um to aim for about 
maybe a 20 minute guided meditation and then we can close with the announcements and stuff. All right. Okay, so oh, let's just move into a comfortable position and uh, let yourself be at ease. We don't put too much into posture or, uh, you know, you don't have to sit straight or, you know, just something that won't distract you. And again, but if your heart is facing toward the group, that will help. And uh, just, just allow yourself a few deep breaths moving into presence in your body, in your physical space and in our shared space in this moment, in this time now. And just let the breath move in a little deeper and feel it specifically in and around your heart space. Just feel that air raising your chest and bringing life and energy as you let your awareness begin to come from your heart space. So most often we're perhaps in our heads and we don't wanna just think about our heart. We want to drop down into our heart space. So if you need a little help getting there, you can always tap down from your head down the side of your face to your heart. If you like, you can also cover your heart with your hands. Just bringing that energetic attention, your heart experience, connecting to that loving energy, perhaps even arising from what we've already shared together tonight. And if any emotions are coming up or anything from that heart space, don't try to fight it or change it. Just let it be and be held from the energy of your heart. And you can also let that, let your awareness move even deeper into the heart, down into your radiant center, the core of your heart. And this center is always emanating love and bliss. It's always generating from within You might feel the bliss or you might not, but let your awareness be in that space of shining forth from your heart. And now if you would, if you might intentionally allow your heart to open, maybe even open your hands toward the group if you want, as we move from that heart space within out into the heart space among us. And this is an act of trust and consent that we're moving into a safe space that's held by love coming from that deep surge of love within each one of us, in each one of us and from the loving group heart in our shared energy field. You might picture a channel from your heart flowing into the group heart 
giving and receiving in this loving space. In the shared we space among us. And go ahead and let yourself return back to the space within in your body and make your way down to your feet. You might even wiggle your toes or press your feet against the floor beneath you as we ground ourselves to the earth. You can even imagine roots growing from the bottom of your feet, reaching down deep into the earth tapping into the energy of material reality, the energy of this earth that we all share. And you can breathe that energy up into your feet and legs, into your whole body. We might call this Christ energy the interfusion of the divine and the material that's present in our very cells. This cosmic energy connecting us to the web of life. The energy of our physical embodiment and all of its goodness. Present in your physical being. And if you like, you can also allow yourself to move out into that we space in the web of life, into our incarnated entanglement. And now gradually bring your awareness back to your body in the space within, moving up to your spiritual womb. We all have a spiritual womb, whether we have a physical one or not. Um, and that's in the space of our gut. You might even place your hands over your belly just centering down into this space of being, this warm embrace, space of holding, space where you can just be.
Maybe you feel a flowing generativity or perhaps an anchoring into the depths of your deepest identity to your ground of being, to your source, this wellspring of divine identity continuously flowing forth into your being. The gift of vitality given in every moment. And now staying centered in your womb and grounded in your feet, touch base again with your radiant center in your heart. And we'll move once again into the we space, into our shared space among us from these centers. And this time we might, in the we, experience our interbeing. And this deep connection that we are not separate from the earth. We're not separate from one another. And we're not separate from God. Allow your awareness to settle again back into the space within, touching in with your radiant heart center. We'll have one more movement up to our head and coming from the energy of the heart and the body. We often find that our mind is unusually cleared and we can simply rest in that vibrant, cleared stillness. Sometimes we also find a deeper knowing coming forth or arising from within, maybe a visionary image or picture, maybe a symbol that's being brought forth to our mind from this awakened consciousness 
And we can receive that with gratitude. And now once more from our whole being, from our cleared, vibrant mind, our radiant heart, our centered womb and our grounded feet to our embodiment, we'll move once more into the we space and into a time that we call emergence, where we can be open to sensing from these places of awareness, from these four centers, maybe from the we itself, whatever might be arising or coming forth in this moment. Speaking not what we already know, but what we're about to know. What's coming forth for us now in this moment. So I'll open up the we space to sharing if anyone feels drawn to express that in words. And you can also feel free to express that silently, energetically, in whatever form is fitting and right for this moment. And if you want to share, don't forget to unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, this is Noel. And um, that was just such a wonderful experience. My my eyes just kept on like tearing up, and um, just really, just really felt so wonderful. I guess that's all I can say. But I'm also going to say, those pictures that you had, all that artwork, a sub subliminal message there with all the weaving and tapestry and everything coming together to form such a beautiful, um, such a beautiful image that I was seeing that over and over again. So <laughs> I really, I, I, I get, I get a lot of the art. It just seemed to go along with the whole uh, four, four body um, part that you did. So thank you so much. Very beautiful. Thanks, Noel. Yeah, I want to share that um, I'm just right in the very beginning. And then again, just at that closing, um, just messages from our ancestors, their presence here and their gratitude for these co creative gatherings, conversations, and really being in the heart. And uh, I just heard this reminder and we're right here with you all the time. Please keep calling upon us. Mm. Yeah, Karen, thanks for bringing that forth. That's, I didn't bring it into the meditation actively because it's a, uh, yeah, people think differently about it, but we put a lot of emphasis on spiritual guides and ancestors and the cloud of witnesses. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, thanks for bringing them in actively. Well, in our we space groups, we uh, in that time of emergence, we actually, in the practice, try to uh, help cultivate our knowing from those centers and what's arising. And we do that actually. We go around and focus on each person, 
and um, and the person is just kind of open to receive and everyone else can either just silently send loving energy to them or if there's something specifically arising for them that we want to offer to them then we we can share that again from our centers maybe from a guide something we're seeing um, and that's sort of a practice of we call it integral prayer it's it's praying from our divine consciousness rather than praying out to god for someone else right but it's a way of, of being together uh in a different different form of, of prayer consciousness so um that's a little taste of what we do in the we space yeah well i like that that you you know not praying out to god because i mean we are god everything is god yeah. so you know to anthropomorphize God is, I think, one of the main ways that the Christian, a lot of religions have taken us astray from our true identity. Mm-hmm. And, um, and um, I, I'm just going to say this one thing. I watched this video with uh, Gary Renard, who does a lot with the A Course in Miracles. And um, he, uh, he said a lot of people think of Jesus as a leader. And he says he wasn't a leader. He was a follower because he followed that, that little small voice inside, which, you know, that connection that he had to source. And I just love that thought so much. I just had to shoehorn it in here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, oh man, that's just, oof. we, we, <laughs> We talk about the three faces of God. If you're ever curious, the three faces of God from Paul, that's one of Paul's just, it's an evolved Trinity. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It brings in the, it goes beyond the the theistic, panentheistic, you know, within, um, it's beside being and beyond, right? So transcendent as well. So yeah, that's good. So beautiful. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you so much for sharing this space. And thank you, uh, thank you for coming this yeah. evening. Thank you, Annie, for bringing him. Uh-huh. Gosh, thank you, Luke, for saying yes. <laughs> yeah. It's out there now. It's you know we're a small group, but you know these things plant seeds. So mm-hmm. that that silent space just after you sort of closed the meditation and created an opening for people to share. Um, I know Bob and Noel and I have studied for a long time together in various groups. And, and um, we would often say when that silent, we would often just be like, no one would say anything. No one was moving. We were just like in the bliss, like we could just do this the whole time, you know? And I, I was remembering that because it's the same sensation and what a great way to you know close the evening with yeah. um and i have some announcements and and luke you and i didn't t- connect you know before you came on tonight uh, so what we've been co-creators convergence bought this course and i put there just putting up their link um a little bit about them in the chat if anyone wants to save the chat and and get that and share that with other people mm-hmm. Um, so these Thursdays have become, there used to be a once a month Thursday call through co-creators convergence. And then they kind of connected up with the conversation. And so every Thursday we're doing this now. And so whoever speaks, we like to have them sort of pay it forward and, and bring someone else in. And, and so next week we do have Bob and I'm going to kind of announce him in a second here. And then we get to have Peter the following week who was going to be on a couple of weeks ago, who also is a part of the conversation and he's going to share probably about the up convergence and Luke, um, you and I can, can get in touch if there's someone you would like to bring in to speak. Um, it's, it would be wonderful. And it's again, just a way of all of us connecting and sharing and, and then people, you know, going with where they resonate. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have someone in mind, so that'd be yeah. great. <laughs> Usually that's the case. So I wanted to make sure you were aware on that. And then, you know, between Annie and I'll get your email address. And um, so let me just tell you who we have speaking next week. And I do know Bob very well, but I am going to actually, um, there is something that Bob offered on the Up Convergence, and I didn't get to be a part of it. And it's this topic called spiritual beings having a human political experience. And um, he shares that the discussion will stand on the shoulders of the expression, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience, but rather spiritual beings having a human experience. 
um, I don't like to talk about politics is a political act, the act of not engaging in an element of the human experience. So what is a spiritual person to do in the political world? And so that's what Bob's going to explore. And I think next week's a great, great timing for that. And, um, and Bob and Noel, you know, they, as you heard a little bit about their light partners, co-creators. I don't know if Noel will be chiming in on that conversation or not next week. <laughs> I never, chime? I never have an opinion. She doesn't, <laughs> when does she not chime? When does she not chime? <laughs> when does she not chime? So Bob, thanks for saying yes. You're welcome. And we will get a Facebook event up there and um, feel free for the rest of you to share that, invite others to come and join, invite them to the conversation too. Again, if you just go to their website, you'll see a bit of their schedule and, um, and yeah, anything Noel that I might be missing here? No, I think that's it. I just want to ask, does anyone know who Akashi was that was on earlier? I didn't, I didn't know if that, if that person was from the conversation, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So I assume that the case. Yeah. I've never if seen her in that you, group yeah, either, but um, yeah. Hope or she, she was borrowing somebody else's phone. But she was, um, yeah, she th thought, uh, I just want to give a little feedback. She thought a super enlightening conversation. Yeah. yeah. Namaste. She had to run to a meeting as, as did others. And um, so I just wanted to give you, you know, some of the feedback there. And yeah. uh, thank you, Annie. Annie has really blessed yeah, us yes, these last couple of so. weeks. And I've got, to, I've got to tell my father, Joe, our, our good buddy who's 86 year old retired Catholic priest, he mm. would love your group. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you, Absolutely. you might go, oh my God, this is what I've been talking about for I don't know how long. Been, we just talked <laughs> last week. It's been like two weeks now since he got a call from the upset bishop, which he yeah. has, he has his resumes full of calls from the bishop. <laughs> it's been at least two weeks. Office. It's been two weeks since. Bring, it. Bring right. him on. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he did a little talk. And at the end, he just said, Joe Biden cares. And so he got reported. Yep. But he, the, the, the archdiocese, he doesn't get any money from them. He yeah. runs a Catholic worker house. Yeah, it's been a Dorothy Day Catholic been retired worker house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with their Catholic worker house? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, actually, before this, I did a lot of work in new monastic intentional communities, which is really partnered with Catholic workers stuff. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Father Joe. Definitely let him know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> if we could ever corral him into sitting still for something. Like <laughs> Get him on a Thursday. I didn't realize he was the Catholic worker there. That's like my, um, one of my he best high school friends, yeah. her brother, Jeff Dietrich, started the Catholic worker in LA and he's still there. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we knew that connection, Bob and Noel. <laughs> no, um, we actually helped him start his uh, nonprofit there where we used to live in Wisconsin. Yeah. And right. he's been going strong. I guess he re they kicked him out when he was 70. Get right. rid of this progressive priest. <laughs> Richard Rohr is one of his favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. I studied with Richard. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so oh, my goodness. I've got to tell Father Joe about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is how we weave. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's the network. Yeah. Weaving. I love Luke, it. definitely. I do some work called Heart Thread. Annie, I think it was before you got on. And it's this, I'm actually doing a training tomorrow. I'm so excited um, in this beautiful casita I'm in and outdoors and mm. training Heart Thread practitioners. Yet it's just so similar to what you, you know, hands on the heart, the grounding, the feet, the body gives the statements to say, and then we just bring in our self-authority and release our self-doubt. It's really powerful work. Mm -hmm. And it's so just, again, resonant with, with all of this. Yeah. Wonderful. That's so, great. Yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Yes. Thank you. This was thank wonderful. Thank you, thank you for making this right. a conversational and engaging uh, evening. Thank you for that. Yeah, really right. appreciate it. Right. Thank you all. Very Thanks special. So much. Luke, out there beautiful. Good night, everyone. Yeah. Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay.